Coffee by the campfire, a mother effer says. Coffee by the campfire. Like cowboys. Oh, God. You know? C coffee by the campfire. The, the cowboys have, um, La Crusette. I don't know if they had La Crusette, but I think they had French presses, right? Oh. All those other, or mocha pots, I guess. Mocha pots. Mocha pots. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll tell you what I do know, but this is Brocast 3, or 4. Good afternoon, welcome. Good evening, welcome. Morning uh, and... Good morning and night, welcome. And welcome to Brocast... No, nine? Three? Five? We don't know. It's something like that. We don't know, I guess the fumes from the bonfire are kind of going into my head a little bit. Yeah, it feels kind of nice. You know? Yeah. Bit of asphyxiating. Uh, That's a difficult word to just whip out. Monoxide. A little bit monoxide. Yeah. I'll tell you what's not monoxide. That's those jarlings over at the Jar Media. Patreon. Patron. Patron. I can't do the French thing. I'm sorry. Le um, petit patron. <laughs> they make the audio version of the show possible and get their names read out in the first or second week of each month. Just missed it last episode, but as always, next month. There's always another month. There's always next month, and there's always something on the docket. We've got a docket. We've only got a short little housekeeping to do this week. I like doing that sometimes, just pinching it down, you know, just pinching it and like the the bits on a on a on a uh, pasty. What? Right? Bits on a pasty. Yeah, to make it have the wiggle. Bits on a pasty to make it have Pinch a wiggle. Pinch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's how they know. make pasties. I'm not sure, brother. I think so. Make it. What's a what's a global equivalent of a a pasty? A pasty. Yeah. They probably call it like the way Americans call scones biscuits. Biscuits. And no, that, I, that mess. I, I was um someone a, a little anecdote. Someone I know was in a uh, a, a British pub in America. Hmm. And um, they had pasties on the menu. And oh, in a pub, like a freshly made pasty. It was called of. like a Cornish pasty. Mm, okay. And the waitress was like, the Cornish pasty is really good. Nice. So, <laughs> a pasty, for those who don't know what a pasty is. Well, um, yeah, this is the housekeeping segment where we hit up some of the <laughs> interesting comments that left some of the conversation to be desired. Something to be addressed. Like this... <laughs> this. From Jagon the Mike 4102. Alex has the hands of a murderer. Soft, but vicious. Jim <laughs> has the hands of a man who knows his way around a town. There's a tenderness to them, but also a finality. Both hands could take a life, but while one would relish it, <laughs> the other would not. <laughs> That's my least favourite comment we've ever had. That's <laughs> terrifying. That's horrible. <laughs> Why are they always characterising me as the horrible murderer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's freaky. Soft but what? Soft but vicious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, someone replied to that. Timothy. Mark my words, Mindhunter will return after Alex makes his first kill. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I've noticed that, like, I don't know, is it just, like, how I look or something? I, when I go to, like, the supermarket and stuff, I'm normally tailed by the security person. <laughs> and he's, um, I know what he's doing. I know exactly yeah. what he's doing. And he's, like, acting like, oh, just looking at paracetamol, nothing, nothing mm -hmm. going on here. And so you're just going everywhere I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you kind of have smuggler vibes. And I guess I do have smuggler vibes. You got smuggler vibes, and like I guess you could call a uh, what do you call it? A shoplifter. A shoplifter kind of smuggles goods out <laughs> of a shop, right? I guess. And they've never called me on it, but they suspect me of it. Yeah, and that hurts. You've got um, <laughs> hoodlum characteristics. Well, speaking of hoodlums. Varake says, Jim straining to think of unhinged media obsessions and failing to come up with Mad Max had me screaming at my monitor. 
It's not unhinged. It's um, bad. <laughs> I can see Checkmate. <laughs> You're always better than me at chess. Not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's unhinged, though. Just because, like, you really like something. I, I feel like the unhinged part is when it, it kind of absorbs. I think they're only saying unhinged because that was, like, I think that was the question that was being asked, was like, what are you the most... It was in the phrasing of the question. Yeah, I guess... I don't think they're just straight up calling you unhinged. Yeah, but, like, I, like I, my interpretation of the question is, like, what do you have an unhealthy relationship with, like, mm. in terms of media? Um, right. And I guess it, it kind of consumed a lot of my, like, discussions mm -hmm. for, for years... So uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess they're right. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and finally, Skak Newman says, speaking as a small Welsh man who just came back from a week in New York, nothing can prepare you for it. The traffic, the noise, the smell. There is nothing like it. And he just left it at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, it's kind of ominous because it's like he doesn't yeah. say either way if yeah. he liked it. Does, is um, the smell good? Is the noise good? <laughs> Were we distressed by the traffic? Is he saying don't go to New York? And is the fact that he's Welsh and small is yeah, that important? Small Welsh. For the... Is he saying that like that? Those factors would mm. greatly affect small Welsh how people are known to... to have like really sensitive hearing and and sense of They're smell. They're known to have a particular time in New York, whereas mm. if you're what, a big Scottish man yeah. or woman... Yeah, it's great. It's right. just awesome. Okay. So I have to keep that in mind. Do they have, like, a guide? Like, a spreadsheet so I can figure out, like, if yeah, I'm going to enjoy New York? or You've got to do, like, your ancestry um, dot com results and you get, like, cross-reference it with the the genetic v yeah. variations that the, uh, work in New York. We got a uh, a curry yesterday. We went out um, and got a bite. And the waiter found it humorous that um, I knew that there was, like, some Irish DNA. Because um, I, like... Oh, right. I, I don't even know why I brought it up, but it came, it came up for some reason. And then he, That's your it, unhealthy obsession. <laughs> you're, like, you're, like, 3% Irish DNA. <laughs> yeah, vague DNA links to whatever... Belfast up on. or something? Yeah. Um, but he was... Uh, he found that funny. And I guess he's one of those kind of waiters where he's, like... Practicing his stand up as well, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, he, he must be like around my age or something because he's whipping out like millennial memes, um, okay. like reference, like just memes in the in the comedy. I guess that's our reality now. Like, we got the mm -hmm. meme, we got mm -hmm. memers in there, yeah, doing their stand up. Um, but the reason I bring that up, the waiter situation, is that we went out somewhere else to celebrate. It was like my belated birthday meal or something. Went to a tapas place, mm -hmm. um, which was yummy or whatever. But there was one big takeaway from that meal. Yeah, I think the I know where this of, is going. The subject of tequila worms came up. Mm -hmm. Something I wasn't familiar with. Because at the end of the meal, um, yeah, the waiter came over and was like, do you want shots? Um, mm -hmm. And they were like free, so it was like, okay, sure. I'll have a tequila shot. Um, so of course, yeah, this this topic of the tequila worm comes up. Um, my my father was there, and he was saying about how he had a roommate that would like fight over the tequila worm. Or yeah, like, he wanted to prove himself in the. There was a masculinity yeah, uh, the... attached to the tequila worm. Mm -hmm. Some kind of like you know, like you eat the hottest chili to prove something. It's kind of yeah. a similar thing. Where it's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat the tequila worm, and yeah, he was describing it as kind of a like a ritual that makes you spin out and like hallucinate. A, a, yeah, you see like a different so timeline. Like, or... <laughs> I've never heard of the tequila worm, so I'm like, they're messing. Yeah. Um, 
I even Google like tequila worm, and the first result is like, don't believe the tequila worm myth. So I'm thinking like they're lying. They're just trying right, to okay. yank the chain. And then some someone mentions to the waiter, oh, have you ever tried the tequila worm? And just like completely deadpan, he's like, oh yeah, I've tried the worm. Yeah, it was like I was in Mexico. I had many worms. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, so I. It's, it's real. It's real. It's confirmed by a third party. All this worm lore that I just... Mm -hmm. It's been there for so long. And it's... I did some research because I was like... I was genuinely asking myself, like, would I eat the tequila worm? Would I mess with that worm? And for some reason, it was important to me what what that worm would become. Mm -hmm. Is it... Is it like a caterpillar situation that's going to turn into like a butterfly? Or is this like a grub that's going to be like a gross something you just don't even want to think about, you know? Yeah. And luckily, the tequila worm turns into a moth. Really? Yeah. Okay. And it lives in cacti? It, it feasts on the fruit that you make tequila out of. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how the so, guy figured out that if you put it in the drink, it changes the flavor. That's why is that, is that why they... Yeah, yeah. Do they still do that? <clears throat> do they just not have the worm in the bottle? It's like a certain it's type of tequila... Okay. Um, we'll have the worm. Right. Um, so does it turning into something beautiful make it better to eat or worse? <laughs> it know? makes it neutral to eat instead of, like, horrible. So if it stayed ugly, then it would be bad to eat. You wouldn't if, want to eat it. I just... There's something about grubs, you know? Yeah, I mean... Uh, because I'm kind of of the stance, like, it a is a grub. grub. <laughs> uh, yeah, a grub's a grub. When, if you're going to eat a grub, then... I, I'm going to be honest, I, I have no good reason for why I feel that way. I just am. It's like an emotional response. It's completely emotional driven, like, no mm -hmm. logic. Like, mm -hmm. that's just how that's, that's going to be. That's fair. Yeah. Got no way to justify it. Okay. So the conclusion, would you worm? Um, I think I would have to try the tequila worm. Worst comes worse. Wow. Worms a little, worm little protein worse. snack. Uh -huh. You know, soaked in well, tequila. Well, that's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, you... You spin out on tequila worm. Yeah. Or it wasn't dead, and it grows within. Uh, last of Us sort of situation type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Mothman type stuff. And, uh, speaking, I guess, of video game television... Uh, Coastalinium can get us started on this topic that I want to talk to you about. I don't know if you guys still talk about TV shows or not, but what do you think about the Fallout TV show? This is also prescient with, um, last episode we had that person who collated buzz words we'd said over many, many episodes. Oh my god, yeah. Um, and yeah. one of them was Fallout. It's gonna skyrocket. Uh... So yeah, I kind of I briefly mentioned my thoughts on episode one mm. a few episodes back when you hadn't seen any of it, but we've both seen it all now. Yeah. Um, I binged the hell out of it. Yeah, it is very bingeable. It's kind of written that way. Um, man, I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised because uh, from the ads and stuff, I thought this ain't. Yeah. This ain't gonna be good. Like, there's no way, right? <laughs> yeah, and I thought. Um... If anything, it was going to be like Halo TV. Because, yeah. Tier. And in my mind, like, the the weight still leans towards, like, bad adaptations. Mm -hmm. Like, even when everyone was hyped about The Last of Us, there was nothing, like, really exciting. Out, outside of that one episode, like, episode two or three, that's, like, its own self-contained story, um, I'd just rather play the games. I was saying this to you, I think, yesterday. Yeah. Um, this Fallout show offers something to me that I can't really get from the games. Um, and actually, if anything, would now make jumping back into Fallout 4 or something like this better for me. Because now I actually have a little bit of context as to, oh, that faction is that, I guess. That's their mm. motus. That's their motivation. Um, yeah, and it just had the right tone. Yeah. Um, even though the, all the factions in the show are, like, pre-established ones from, like, the first two games. Um, right. 
Yeah, because I've never fit like for context. I've never finished a Fallout game. Mm. I've played maybe like ten hours of Fallout Four, five hours of New Vegas, and a couple hours of Three. Um, yeah. So I really I know nothing, um, which was part of what was interesting about you bringing up yesterday in our conversation. Um, Tell me about like the the nerd stuff, the lore bits. Yeah, so it's, they're talking about stuff that I guess I, I must have missed like loads of details. So I was picking up like, oh, that's the the med kit thing from the game. Yeah, that's, that's a reference there. That's obvious stuff, but beyond the surface level, I, like names of places and references to events and things, I wouldn't pick up. But yeah, of which there's like loads of. Um, down to the the like nitty gritty of the like set design and it's one to one the computers are identical yeah, yeah. to the computers the in the game mini game yeah there's a, <laughs> a character hacks at one point and, and this it is the mini game there's something <coughs> about that like retro aesthetic that does so much of the heavy lifting for me where that something about it like it it somehow avoids the corniness that other adaptations really have to me like the uncharted film or yeah even um well, like that cyberpunk show and stuff like that um there's like the a corniness a self-awareness to the tone um that yeah. diffuses some of the more goofy stuff that might bother me in other places because it is colorful it is weird it does have a pretty light-hearted tone for most of the time mm -hmm. but is able to whip out some more kind it, of serious it, or it hits both the drama and the the comedy yeah i think equally well for the most part um it made me appreciate fallout 4's art design more because the the jump from New Vegas to Fallout 4, like, the vibrancy, like, the everything pops. Yeah. Um, and that was something I remember people kind of liked about 3 and New Vegas was, it's like the greyest, yeah. grey, brownie, I mean, green New Vegas, kind of. I mean, it's based in Vegas, so it, it is more, like, colourful um, than 3, but still, yeah. like, everything's kind of washed out and murky mm -hmm. and, like, you really feel the filth in those games, yeah, yeah. In, in 3 and 4, and <laughs> 3 in Vegas. Yeah. Um, Fallout 4 is a bit more polished. But I think, like, due to the set design and stuff in, in the show, you really, it, you get that filthiness. And yeah, yeah. And also, like, down to the costume design and the contrast of like the people in the vaults that are squeaky clean. They yeah. like filter their language and stuff like that. Like they won't swear and they're just kind yeah. of like overly nice, like a caricature of like the nuclear family basically. Yeah. It's just like been preserved. And that constant like jump and um, juxtaposition, I guess, of that is like a constant source of good humor for me. Um, yeah. Some of the best humor was that stuff for me. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it can hit that that angle way better than the games because I don't. It's, it was kind of like a different thing, like when, like in New Vegas, which is a lot of people's favorite Fallout. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the humor is in the writing of like the responses, like oh, that's a really funny response. I could say if I wanted yeah. to lean this way, and they might have a funny thing to say back. But that's like. That feels different than like the comedic timing you need to the flow of a TV show. Um, yeah, and it never goes into like I said, like self-aware, and that is part of it. But it's not like Deadpool-y. It doesn't feel mm. Marvel-y, even though it could almost get there at points. But it, it just yeah, avoids all it, these things, like the you were saying about the sets. Like that was I was loving that too. Like the production yeah. design is really good. Like. When you're in the vault, it feels like they're in a vault, and there's like a big door that moves, and mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of like practical decisions with the the tools they're holding and the even the power armor in certain ways. Like. Yeah, because you you said um, about the it looking kind of cosplay, and it, uh, it it did kind of feel that way at points, but yeah, in 
at other times it like you totally believe it. It, mm -hmm. it feels yeah. I I brought that up in the first episode because there's like a shot of like five dudes in power armor, and I thought it was going to be more like the Halo sh show where there's loads of like camera flying around, CG guys just sprinting, and it's just like total schlock. Yeah, and they never really go there. It's reeled back, and I just I was glad with the structure of it being like character led, and it's like mm -hmm. each one builds up to something interesting. Cuts goes to. Walt Goggins, see what he's up to. He's got the whole element of jumping forwards and back in time and like just sprinkling all these different locations. And it's like, yeah. how's this all like linking? Characters like splitting up, getting, meeting up in different ways and going back to locations that are in episode one or two. There's like a cool structure and feel to it. Yeah. I think there's only one moment of like, this is a bit much of a coincidence that they these, do do that, that these a lot. characters man um, um for the most part they avoid it. it it happens like once um which i'm i'm fine with if it there wasn't like a reliance on it yeah it's just i don't know it wasn't the main crux of what i was enjoying about it was like the mechanics of how everything was working like that. Um, mm -hmm. It was more like the aesthetic, the the mystery around Walton Goggins, um, yeah. the like humor of the stuff in the vault, the like secrets of like what are the what's a vault tech doing? What are, I, I like the whole and it's in the games too, right? The gimmick vaults and like yeah, yeah, yeah. What was number twenty five up to, and how mm -hmm. does that contrast to Vault sixty? Or yeah. Um, yeah. The world is cool and interesting to me. Um, and they build it out, like, just enough. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the fact that it's a TV show m makes it able to tell the story more interestingly. Yeah. Because all, all of the pre-war stuff in the games, um, apart from, like, the beginning of 4, is told through audio logs mm -hmm. and reading stuff on terminals yeah like that's not the most engaging way to tell a story uh -huh. and you you don't really have a choice in yeah yeah in a game um i know uh, in fallout 3 there's a dlc where you like play a simulation of the anchorage conflict yeah in yeah Alaska. i've heard about that before um <clears throat> which is one way of doing it but like it's the time hopping using the ghoul to like tie the two timelines together the ghoul stuff yeah like everything is set up and they use the universe and what's already pre-established in mm -hmm. that universe to tell this story and teach rules to someone who like like me who really doesn't get yeah why everything is the way it is yeah and i i'm definitely not like the biggest fallout nut like the the one i've played the most is four it, four is the only one i've played to conclusion um you played big chunks of vegas though yeah i've played a lot three. of vegas i've tried to finish vegas three times i think um Oops. the pc port is atrocious um <laughs> but i've always had an affinity for the universe yeah and so have i that's why i've tried the game so many yeah, times. yeah but kind of like you said it's nice to be able to enjoy Fallout without playing it. <laughs> <laughs> At least have that option, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is cool. And a bunch of really talented just character actors in there. Mm -hmm. um, the, like, bad guy from Mr. Robot <laughs> is the, the Brotherhood guy. Um, that old dude. That's right. That's that's who I thought was in Game of Thrones. Yeah, Fans. yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, He's awesome. Uh, Kyle Mc McGlock. <laughs> Kyle McGlock. <laughs> um, yeah, Twin Peaks. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the dad character. Yeah. Um, Walton Goggins, obviously, is the big standout. They even do they do stuff that, like, shouldn't work, um, but kind of just got me. Like, the they do the war line. They do it. Yeah. And just and that pause and everything. It's like, okay. Yeah, you earned that. That's that's hilarious. You like got that in there, and it's not just looking at the camera. Um, yeah, just doing it for the sake of it. It's like in a moment, 
it's like in that last episode is <laughs> yeah yeah it's that pretty worked. awesome and even um even not knowing the games very well i know like some of the music from fallout 4 and it's sprinkled in there there are a couple of yeah. moments where they use it it was like oh this is cool it's used in reference specifically to new vegas uh, oh really i think that's the first time they use it is um when the new Californian Republic flag is yeah. shown. Um, but it which was is like, from New Vegas. I had this real moment where I was like, oh, it's nice for like something that's based on a video game to not be ashamed that it's based on a video game. I'm yeah. Because like, I was thinking, I've seen like just coping desperate Halo fans who have like taken scenes from the show and it's like, L -l look, if we put the real music, look at the difference it makes. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, See, it's like so obvious, you know. Yeah, I I was just kind of surprised they didn't use it more. Yeah, it was like really restrained. Like only having I I was for sure thought they were gonna shove in like a death claw, whatever. Because I thought yeah. they love shoving those guys in like they do the power armor mm -hmm. all the time. Um, but it's like what? It's just a skull. Was yeah. the only only little yeah. reference there. Like right at the end. Um, I guess um there were a few things that I, I w didn't love. Um, some of the performances aren't great from like some random side characters that like come in that are like distractingly bad um, just for like a scene or two um, there's that there there is some like crazy CG that's like really obviously CG um, yeah but that, yeah, it wasn't really bugging me because there was something just so cartoony about the world. And I feel yeah, like it didn't. It never pulled me out. Um, yeah, I, I was fine with it. And all things considered, there's a lot of TV shows that have looked like white. Yeah, ones. yeah, that's um, why the those sets were really standing out to me. Yeah, um, I feel like that was more important to have the like it's grounded in what looks like a real space. If you got like a, a dibby CG mm -hmm. globular yeah. thing, I thought like, the okay. the like Brotherhood storyline took like quite a while to get good or interesting for me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't really get where that was going until um, those characters were paired up and were kind of stuck together, right. and then that dynamic was actually way more interesting to me than what was going on previously. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of relies on a MacGuffin. Um, yeah. So there's not all that much investment from, like, his actual motivation to to do mm -hmm. what he's doing. There was, um, and I know it is part of Fallout's whole aesthetic, and, like, world building is, like, this critique of capitalism thing. Um, and that comes out a lot in the dialogue, some of which was just felt... I don't know, it felt like kind of heavy-handed in how it was... Yeah, on an Amazon Prime TV show Yeah, an IP that's owned by Microsoft. And like, <laughs> Mr. Robot would do that as well, but like, it was probably better written. Um, yeah. Better presented. Um... um cause like, I thought the writing was fun for when it's like... If there's like an action thing going on as well, and Goggins like, killing everyone in a town, or holding up someone in their kitchen or something and he's got his kind of zingy lines or whatever yeah that stuff the the corny guys in the vault and uh the main character's brother and that whole stuff i loved loved that whole intrigue and whatnot um but yeah some of it i guess just yeah yeah it's very heavy-handed um i guess slight spoilers there's a scene with like a bunch of big business owners Mm -hmm. And they're like, what if we get a bunch of poor people and make them all fight? <laughs> it's like... Yeah, because it was like... it was there, was there was a point where it was at a good level where that kind of stuff was being implied to be happening anyway. And you'd assume yeah. that would be happening. And by not showing it, it was kind of better. And then indulging to that degree was just like, all right. Yeah. I get like, is it... He's supposed to be over exaggerating, or is this like to communicate um, how greedy this company is um, and illustrate the point? And it felt just like you're making the same point, just like again and again at this point. Um, yeah, 
Um, and the whole kind of show has been leaning that way anyway. Yeah, I think I was fine with it because tonally it's so um, goofy. Mm. It's I, yeah. I just love that it is able to take itself seriously while being goofy. Like mm -hmm. it's it's not. It's so far removed from any reality where it's like it's in the future, but culturally they're in the past. Yeah. Um. It kind of works for me. Like everything is exaggerated. Everything mm -hmm. is like. It's it's not grounded. Yeah. Um. So critiquing capitalism in a world that doesn't reflect ours at all mm. isn't as like atrocious We're like, to me yeah it's like a private company basically nukes the world There's yeah like, I spoilers sorry um private company makes it so the world is nuked in order to justify their like vault um, yeah product yeah i i don't know if that is like the law like they they did do it i don't know if that scene was just to imply that they would right okay like yeah, that's how far they would go mm -hmm. um like if it doesn't happen they're gonna make it happen anyway yeah um it may be in the law like i say i but i'm not like that well read mm -hmm. on Fallout. Yeah, law. I know like nothing about Fallout law. So, um, but I I like that angle. Um, and I was confused because like some of the responses and whatnot I've seen online, people like really anti it before it came out. Then it switched on a dime. But then just like the games, there's all these subsections of like, oh, people don't like the aesthetic of. Fallout 4 and 76 and that imagery is used in the show a lot so then that section of Bethesda fans like are complaining about that right, cause yeah. that's be and it's like oh my god like what part because I saw New Vegas fans complaining that it like disrespects New Vegas on like yeah. it's just like well so what is like what actually I, is happening I didn't really get that vibe at all cause like I've I've played New Vegas a fair amount and the fact that it's included to the degree that it is, mm -hmm. um, like the spoilers, the the end of the show is setting up that it's like going to be based in Vegas. Yeah, which so it looks like a New Vegas season, basically. Yeah, which I, I feel like it, it, you don't really they they know who they're making the show for. They're making it like for yeah. They make it, they've they've managed to do it. They've made it for like new people and hardcore and fans. Yeah, and that's another hilarious contrast with the Halo show, where the the news around that was like they were bragging. I think it was showrunners or writers on season one, like yeah, we don't even play the games. We don't even. Play. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the the writers here and Jonathan Nolan, mm -hmm. um, Chris Nolan's brother, talking about oh yeah, I love Fallout Three. And he's like, actually, has played the game and uh -huh. like, gets what it's going for. Yeah, and you can feel that. You uh -huh. can feel that watching the show. Like, yeah, there's like everyone's having fun. There's like an infectious, joyous kind of thing going on. Yeah, everyone's like, excited to be. Everyone there. gets it. All these like random comedians showing up and like, yeah. this is like, this they're selling it. This really works. And I bet you Amazon's going to take away like the worst, dumbest. Um, like takes from this because they're gonna see oh Lord of the Rings failed, wonder why? Um, oh, probably because it's serious. We need everything to be the boys and be mm. like jokey and be yeah. goofy. Um, and that like just never do anything serious ever again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I'd watch another show of it. Need more Goggins for sure. That character rocks. Yeah, I was getting worried that he was gonna croak. Uh huh towards the end but um and just briefly before we go to mid break um i wanted to mention invincible as well because yeah jim's holding up I, I bought the compendium one uh. which um i guess brief aside like this is one guy who's like he's, he's been building up like a villain in invincible um like building power in the background uh -huh. uh, for like ages I've seen his comments, I've seen his rage where like 
He's got this whole conspiracy theory about me, like, disliking Attack on Titan and, like, being really unfair to Attack on Titan. And because I posted on Twitter a picture, like, I bought this, I'm going to read it. He'd, like, taken that and put a screenshot of it on the subreddit, the Jar subreddit, like, shit talking Invincible saying it's big mouth. Um, <laughs> and, and this and it, and it was all all stemmed from Attack on Titan for some reason was, okay. so I don't don't really get the comparison but okay here we are um, but I read all of that manga and I'm now starting to read Invincible because I'm not patient enough to wait for mm. how long the show is taking to get through it um, well, where, where do you stand on Attack on Titan? well I'll save that for another day <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so I haven't actually read up to where season two ends, which wrapped up like a couple of months ago or something, a month or two. Mm -hmm. um, no one's seen it because there was no advertising. <laughs> yeah, luckily, I guess it's got like rabid fans. Um, yeah. So it's... I mean, it, I only found out it was out because of you. Yeah. And I only saw it because... I think I was scrolling on Twitter or something and there was just a targeted ad that was like, new episode out. And I was like, oh yeah, you're back. It, that's crazy. It, yeah, the way they released it was I don't stupid. Know why it's, it's like they're trying to sandbag it. Like, well, why are you hiding it's, it's awesome. It's really good. Uh -huh. Why are you hiding it? Yeah, yeah. Why are you like splitting it in half it's and not telling audience, anyone? Yeah. Um, yeah, I... I think season one's better, but it's like hard to mm. beat like... That last episode, um, yeah. the first and last episode of what just that chunk of the story has, it's like almost unfair. Um, yeah, it's got like a real hurt. It's such a like, yeah, and a rug pull moment for the main character. But that's not to say they don't do some cool stuff. There's some, it feels kind of more scatterbrained as far as like, and the comic does it too, where it like kind of jumps around a lot and you don't really see why it's doing that until like, Ten, 10 issues later or something mm. so oh this random thing I thought was a throwaway subplot is actually coming back getting fleshed yeah. out now oh this character who like sucked or was lame um, like Rex explosion or whatever it's like mm. oh in this episode suddenly they're gonna do something to him flesh him out kind yeah. of not redeem him but just make you see him in a different way um, yeah make you want him around yeah and it's like oh mm. yeah 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 I don't I, I don't think I've watched a show that that does that so effectively. Like it's the like you say, the way it just throws something in there, and then two episodes later you've forgotten about it, and then suddenly yeah. it comes back a little bit, and then it's gone again. It's uh -huh. like, okay, this is going to turn into something, but I've got they, no idea when. Yeah, and it, it's really good at getting characters who, despite their power, or some are like so OP putting them in situations where the tension is real mm -hmm. and it feels like they're actually in danger and the the stakes as a result of the thing that's about to happen is actually going to change everything like everything feels important um yeah and things can just completely change on a dime like <laughs> when uh i don't know if i should mention specifics um what, what do you think um well, I could say spoiler warning. Yeah, I'll put just a spoiler in the time code, but yeah. Um, when that Viltramite woman like just shows up when they're yeah. at dinner. Um, yeah. That's a good it's example. Or like when <laughs> when he goes to meet his dad and his dad does like a kid with a bug. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just playing it so straight and he's just... his um, Mark's voice actor rocks. He is awesome. He's, he's incredible. He like he really sells it, um, and he really like makes up for some of the like some of the animation stuff that is not up to par. Um, mm -hmm. What did you think of the um, self-referential? <laughs> yeah, like, that's describing that's a reference to a really funny gag in the comic, um, where yeah, Mark goes to get his comic book signed by mm -hmm. the comic artist, and the comic artist makes a joke about reusing panels. Um, right, but they adapted that yeah to kind of prod the animation industry. Um, uh -huh. I just think it'd be funnier if the show like did look incredible at points or something. Um, Saying that it looks significantly better than season one. It looks better than season one, um, but man, like there is some really good stuff in um, 
the last episode of season one. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if they've got the back whole to budget it. went into the yeah, last yeah. Episode. That episode is kind of like everything, um, like just some of the like poses and stuff that are like straight out of the comic or whatnot that are just mm. like burned into my mind. Um, like, just the brutality of like the lines that are coming out there as well, and yeah, yeah, it's fucked up. Um, but yeah, the stuff that's like different from the book so far. Mostly, I'm like, yeah, I see why the show did that. Mm -hmm. Like, um, because I think like the writer Robert Kirkman had a, he's got a big involvement in the show, and it seems like, it seems like writer brain of like, oh, if I could have added this to this character, then then right. maybe, and that seems kind of what the show is doing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, my biggest notes are just like, I wish the animation was slightly better. Um, maybe. Maybe reel back on some of the celebrity voices and like put the money into yeah. the animation. Um, just yeah, as long as we got Mark and Omni Man voices around, I don't care. Um, yeah, and his mum as well. Actually, is very good. Um, yeah, she's a great. Basically, every character that they give time to is worthwhile. Uh huh. Um, it, and there's a, I I love the twins. I love mm -hmm. Robot as well. Um, it's got like, yeah, these really random weird characters and the fact it's all like early on in the comic it's just super just like parody heavy it almost feels like it's like making fun not quite boys level but it's like yeah this panel's making fun of Star Trek this panel's making fun of this nerd thing this mm. is making fun of Fantastic Four this is making fun of Batman uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah and the way it like builds up into because I remember reading The Walking Dead as well which is his other book um, what the same writer? Yeah, yeah, Kirkman oh. created both. Yeah, um, and that story having things happen where you get that like pit in your stomach thing, um, and it feels like there's stake to the world and it's unpredictable. Yeah, um, like Game of Thrones kind of thing was, you know, yeah, good like hooks and it's like addictive in that yeah, way. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Just make it a bit faster. Season two feels more like they're setting up a bunch of strands for like stuff that's going to be important later. Yeah, I like what, how they put a pin on some of them more like you have to do it, but we've got to get past it. Comic book trope type things of like oh, I'm trying to juggle like doing college work and being mm -hmm. a superhero, and like by the end he's like, you know what, I'm just. This yeah. is pointless. <laughs> like, <It's, laughs> like I'm gonna live thousands of years. Like this really is pointless. Um, yeah. Getting to the kind of wrapping it, up the the stuff with his girlfriend and how that was mm -hmm. like inevitable that it couldn't work. I'm glad that's got a bow on it. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, I f I feel like they could have wrapped that up in less time. Took, like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the audience a... twigs on way earlier than the character. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's that just it, like, not a great character. That equivalent character is really different in the book and also sucks there. Um, one of the biggest improvements is his his gay friend in the show who's straight in the comic. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, he has nothing to do. He's, like, such a boring, like, pointless character so far anyway. Yeah. I'm, like, 25 issues in or something. <laughs> and he's, like, just, just there, kind of. Um, where they actually give yeah, cause he's, him he's something kind of... to do. He's he's quite important. Um, uh huh. Yeah. So, guess we'll see you after these messages. Yeah. Draw media shirts now, or I'm gonna hurt you. Description below. Yeah. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome. Guys, I'm welcome. Guys, I'm welcome. I guess, uh, yeah, welcome to the second half of the show, where we head over to the Jail Media subreddit. And there's a juicy little suggestion thread there, where you can ask us questions about anything, any which way. Hello, baby. Yeah. Do you like my style, baby? <laughs> <laughs> um, Alfonso the Second can get us going here. Bear, bear, boys. How's the Eck project going? Or I guess as some call it, the EC. Ah. Yep. Um, steady. Steady as she... What is it? 
Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes, they say. Steady as she goes. Oh, that's got potential. It's already a song. I should Jack oh, White. Um, oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. I was just covering it. I was my my eyes turned into dollar signs. Um, when you the, hear a at the potential a, of a fat um, beat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sinek Dong Doki. 239 says Universal Pictures is planning a terrible, terrible soft reboot of Back to the Future. Who are the new and returning cast members and what's the premise? I, I don't think it, that, that's real. But I think this is a hypothetical. Yeah. Because I, I think Zemeckis like, has a. He's got like a blood pact with that other writer where he's like, no one's doing anything. I'll make three Back to the Futures if we have the rights and you never touch it unless we. Well, until we die, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So, well, we have they died? Is Robert Zemeckis died? He's going to be killed soon. He's going to be killed so they, the can, so they can desecrate Back to the Future. Yeah. Like they've done Ghostbusters or any number of other... Well, it's, it's what, like 60 years until they can... Oh, it's in just the public take... domain or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's, <laughs> let's answer the question then. Who the, are the new and returning cast members and what's the premise? Um, Justin Roiland plays both. <laughs> uh, I was going to make a similar joke where I was going to have it so Rick and Morty are characters in mm. the, the film and they like team up with Doc and Marty. Yeah. Um, like, like, uh, like, like, what's that basketball movie? Space Jam. Space Jam. Space Jam style. Space Bring Jam. <laughs> Space Jam model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new Space Jam as well. So like, it or can legacy have, model. Is, yeah, is it? Who? What? What? Like mega corporation owns? Um, Got the Clockwork Orange rapists in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, they're, maybe they're maybe, maybe the, the Clockwork Orange rapists get the car and they start raping all across time. <laughs> um, so they got to team up Rick and Morty. Yeah. Maybe Jerry to, um, gets, gets yeah, stuck get in Jerry there. in there. Why not? <laughs> get the whole Have you cast. seen the Back to the Future trilogy? Have you just seen the first one? Or what, even the first one? I don't actually know if you've seen I've, it. I've definitely seen the first one. Um, you probably like I don't the cowboy one. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I don't think I've seen the sequels. It's people like hate three, I think. But I thought okay. it was like fun and silly. Yeah. Enjoyable. Yeah, I should. It's just... Um, you know. Kind of breezy. I, I prefer uh, I prefer like watching things I I I've already seen. Do you know what I mean? You know, kind I, of. I don't want to be introduced to new ideas. Ah, right. Well, I can relate to that part. <laughs> <laughs> um, press start fourteen has one I'm mixed on. Thanks, Alex, for making it easier to annoy my friend. I enjoy annoying my friends slash roommate in minor ways, like asking them stupid questions or saying something strange to see how they respond. Sort of like old crackhead Alex era, though perhaps less extreme. Eventually he learned to ignore what I when I'd say stupid shit and not respond. I decided to use Alex's classic trick of going eh after no response, uh. and lo and behold, the trick always seems to annoy him enough to respond, thanks Alex. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if that's too... <laughs> I never intended Do you for feel that. like Einstein? <laughs> like he discovered... Like Einstein? <laughs> yeah, like Oppenheimer. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? What have I unveiled to the world? What have I... Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do I, I wonder... Do I give off the impression that, like, that's just all I... Every interaction I have with people is like... You are pe poo... Eh? Or, <laughs> eh? <laughs> like something. <laughs> I mean, you you can't fault a listener for <laughs> taking that. I guess. That. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah. I'm, maybe this is the glass break moment for me, where I'm like realize how yeah. I acted my whole life. You reflect on your Oppenheimerisms. <laughs> mm. What? Oh, one. <laughs> one one bad day says Sting not being finished is making me very uncomfortable. Can you please just put Sting 404 in the title of the next episode, even if it's not a Sting episode? No. Of course not. You knew around yeah, here. Yeah, that's stupid. Like, really? You, you're even asking that question. I'm thinking about cancelling it. 
I'm thinking about cancelling it. And I nearly cancelled this question, and there's no obligation to answer it, and there's only one reason I bring it up. Um, GG Noodles one says, Hey Jar, I've got an external external hemorrhoid taken out a few days ago, and it really hurt. Thoughts? Have you got any hemi experience? Dude, and don't... that's what made me screenshot it. Hemi. You, hemi. That's a, you can't be shortening it like you're so you familiar he... and your <laughs> he... pals with it. He was listening to to Drake and he thought that's what Drake was. <laughs> that's rapping what he's about. rapping about. <laughs> <laughs> My hemis. <laughs> um, uh, every now and again, there's like there's a comment that will jump out because of the phrasing. Yeah, and it's like you're way too comfortable with that phrasing. You can't. You be... might use it all the time. I mean, yeah, me and Hemi went down. To <laughs> yeah, Hemi goes everywhere with me. Um, yeah, I'm. I mean, do it. Hell yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm down with this guy. Like it's his experience. Hmm. Or her. Very adult of you. Um, Very mature. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to hear about hemorrhoids, it's just like listen to the other like 400 episodes <laughs> yeah you gotta do a control f search for hemorrhoids <laughs> yeah, search on on. The thing. <laughs> talked about it more than fucking halo um let's do this one a little bit chunky but hear me out from the perils of shuffle hey jar just following on from your future potential visits to America, I was actually out in San Francisco the same week as you were in Vegas. Me and some friends stayed for four nights in the city, followed by hiring a car to travel to... Oh god, I'm going to embarrass myself. Yosemite for the rest? Yeah, do you know I that? think that's right. Yosemite. Hooray. Yeah. What you said about homelessness in LA was pretty applicable to San Fran. The city is currently going through a fentanyl crisis as is a lot of places in America and, and Canada, I think it's spread to as well, and has always had a huge amount of homeless people. The first thing we saw as we left the subway from the airport was a homeless woman screaming at everyone walking out of the station, <clears throat> swinging a huge plank of wood saying she was going to kill us. I saw at least two people taking shits in the street. What's wild about it, though, is this sort of unspoken... It's this sort of unspoken thing where you're supposed to not see all the mad stuff going on around you and just admire the city, as if you're supposed to disconnect from all the poverty and social issues and focus on the more affluent and culturally impressive side of, of it all. Needless to say, as a fellow neurotic, I find that particularly hard to do. I would recommend San Fran though, the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz were particular hi highlights. Also the first time I've seen fully functional and hireable self-driving cars, Waymo cars in SF at least, we are truly loving in a living, I think they meant, in a cyberpunk dystopia. As much as I enjoyed the city, I have to say, actually driving through the state was the real highlight for me. I deliberately drove us way out of the way to small towns and weird little stop-offs. And sometimes it was clear they didn't get tourists much and were seriously some of the kindest and most welcoming people I've ever met whilst traveling. They seemed genuinely interested in us and wanted to give us tons of tips and places to go and things to see in Yosemite. Yosemite itself was insanely beautiful. It was still out of season, so there wasn't a huge influx of other tourists. Some of the higher mountain ranges were actually impassable due to the heavy snow that occurred overnight. It was pretty bizarre, hiking up mountain trails one day, dripping with sweat, and going back the following day to see it transformed into a real winter wonderland. Anyway, no question really, just thought I'd share a bit of my experience and recommendation at least for seeing Yosemite or other national parks, Bear Bear Boys. He's basically doing exactly what we were talking about, um, dream doing one day of some kind of like drive. Like a road trip. Good idea, yeah, go there, yeah. hire a car, go through some natural, um, wonderland. Yeah, it's, it does, um, the, the neurotic side of me just thinks it's the setup for a horror movie. Um, like, it doesn't get more generic it's so than remote. that. Yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, I think it's funny like the the hub of technological advancement in America, basically in the world, mm. is in San Francisco, where it's known for its homeless people pooing in the streets. It's weird that, yeah. And it's not like we don't have homeless people here. Um Yeah, I, we but do. Something um, I is it is different though. Something I've noticed every time I've visited America is the abundance of homelessness everywhere. 
Mm-hmm. Um, there's yeah. I've been to three different. I've been to three different states, and they are in abundance. Mm-hmm. Um, it's yeah. It's pretty shocking. Um, but people like we, have this kind of sad at or very sad attitude where people look and they think they got themselves into that mess. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Regular. Oh, they might they might have taken a drug once and that's yeah. why they're there. They took a weed and yeah, it, yeah. it something like it branched. Something too simplistic or like just yeah. you know, just not thinking about this very deeply. Like. Yeah. Um and it is that that like Reagan Thatcher like personal um personal responsibility. Responsibility. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And individual like power. There's no acknowledgement that your Pick life yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, yeah, your life yeah. circumstances has no bearing on where you uh-huh. might end up. Um, which is stupid, dumb, and idiot. It's I stupid, think. dumb, and idiot, and it's unfortunate um, that entire like communities and enclaves can just form in places like LA and San Francisco. And there was, a, I think, someone replied to it. I didn't screenshot it, saying it was. Happening in Austin, Texas, as well, and other big cities, and mm. yeah, you see it in London. You see it, you see it in most cities, actually. Um, but yeah, yeah, it does seem you just, like uh, different, a different intensity, maybe. You got to wait for the the trickle down economics to reach the bottom. You know, it must be like halfway there still in the gutter or something <laughs> like it's it, it's going down just just wait for it and it'll all be fine it works the well, system as we're already on this kind of thing the blimp fruit says hi fellas was refreshing to hear your thoughts on the state of transport in the US and UK and how it compares to some other European countries like the Netherlands Denmark Germany etc <clears throat> it really is sad living in the UK seeing our lack of good trains and cycle paths and then comparing it to our neighbours who do all of that so much better than us on the point you made about the US being a blank canvas, the insanity goes even further than this. The USA was in fact built on its railroads first, and many cities had streetcar slash tram lines. But the car lobbies in the mid-20th centuries caused the streetcar lines to be ripped out to make more space for cars, and in some cities, minority n- neighborhoods were demolished to make way for massive highways. Keep up the great work, guys, and game slash goon on. <laughs> nice isn't it yep um more trams i say everywhere should have trams yeah trams are awesome there's I've, there are good tram systems up north there was a good one in um toronto when i was there I had a cool one um it is possible places in europe do it yeah um they they kind of represent like a a threat e- extreme communist uh danger <laughs> I think so you gotta you gotta approach the tram with a bit of trepidation <laughs> yeah I can imagine all of the like parks and rec tier like council meetings of people uh, picketing trams and uh, mm-hmm. things like this because why what because it might turn it into a 15 mi- minute city convenience which is actually yeah. a trap yeah it's actually a conspiracy to trap you um. <laughs> You're not allowed to leave. <laughs> uh, Fit search nine six three four says bear bear boy boys. I have a question <laughs> for you. Who would win in a fight? A lobotomized ape, or three small genius monkeys? The fight takes place in a small enclosed forest area with plenty of rocks and sticks laying around. The battle only ends once the ape has massacred all three monkeys or the monkey team have successfully eliminated the ape. The monkeys each have an IQ of 300, while the ape has no thoughts or feelings other than pure rage. (laughs) In deep thought on that one. (laughs) Yeah. I think the ape gets it. Really? It's got pure rage on his side, and it's... all All it needs to do, they've got, you know, they've got human hands, they've got thumbs, opposable thumbs, if a if the hand reaches the limb of one of those monkeys, it's over. So as yeah. long as if it if they can outpace monkeys are pretty nimble. They like 
They are, but to beat the ape, they're gonna have to do something to him, right? Yeah, but what ape and what monkey? You know, um, I was picturing like a chimp, a chimpanzee. See, I was picturing a gorilla, because ah. I feel like a gorilla wouldn't be able to keep up with monkeys. And that Three monkeys give... coordinating with extreme intelligence. Yeah, that's like a combined IQ of 900. That's they could probably, like, IQs. there, they could figure out, like, how to tire out the gorilla or something. Yeah, like, tire out the gorilla point. and then fashion, like, a catapult. But I'm thinking, if it's a chimp, who are fast, who can probably catch up, yeah. um, are nimble, <laughs> are, like, ten times stronger than humans, <laughs> I think they might be done, even with that intelligence. Like, what the hell could they do? <laughs> a raging chimp. <laughs> I don't think they stand a chance, these poor little monks. Yeah, but the chimp is lobotomized. Yeah, yeah, but he, he specified, right, that all it has... It has no feelings, except pure rage. But does it have, like, good coordination and stuff? I feel like if you're lobotomized, then you're gonna... I think you only to... mentioned that, so, like, to take out any element of empathy, I guess. I don't know. Right? I don't know. Even though chimps I, I don't enjoy know what this guy's motivation. anyway, so... Yeah, um... I don't quite like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I don't know, find out. You <laughs> know? Do, do it for real. That yeah, was a funny thing research. about the Fallout show, where some of the concept of the vaults is like a, a society where scientists dictate the society. Yeah, they, they have, have like 100% like control. 100% <laughs> control of unregulated science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and spoilers, when, he, when he's like dying, he's like, don't use this as an example of when you give <laughs> yeah, scientists 100% <laughs> freedom. That was awesome. Hmm. Let me see if I can find one more nice one to get. Actually, no, I'm going to do two more. This one from Map Runner UK. Did you know that there was supposed to be a London version of the Vegas Sphere, but it was rejected by Sadiq Khan? Did you also know that Top Golf was founded in the UK? And there are four locations here. The closest here is probably the Surrey one. Bear, bear, boys. Sorry. I didn't know either of those things, but I'm glad Sadiq Khan did did reject that idea, because that would... It belongs in Vegas. Big and stupid and, like, elaborate and... Yeah. Like, this big, like, waste of power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna show you preachy movies about the environment <laughs> destroying it. Um, yeah. Let's not do that in London. We don't need that, I don't think. I think we're good. We'll have a... We'll have an orb someday. Yeah. Everything will be orbs soon enough. Yeah. Houses will be orbs. Would you want an orb house? Um... I want a pyramid house that shoots a beam of light into the sky. Mm. Everyone can, like, shoot beams up and, like, disturb air traffic. Yeah. Make birds, like, fly into trees and shit. Confuse birds so they think it's always daytime a little bit. Yeah. 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 I want to, I want wildlife to be as disruptive as possible. <laughs> Doesn't that happen with the eclipse or something? Like, birds get confused when the sun is covered, and they're like, oh, nighty, night, night time. Yeah, and, and, then, like, and then the moon <laughs> moves, and they're like, morning. <laughs> um, and finally, see if you can pass this one for me. I feel like I've read this, and maybe I'm just stupid. Read this a few times, but he's kind of Jordan Peterson us a little bit here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Rated DG says, is it bad to actively contribute to an institution you predominantly disagree with on an ideological level to avoid dying alone? Well, first you have to break down the word what. <laughs> <laughs> no, break down the word is. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, it, is it bad to actively contribute to an institution you predominantly disagree with on an ideological level to avoid dying alone? What do you mean? Like, uh, actively what, contribute what to an institution. I, I'm hung up on on the institution part and dying alone. Yeah, why does the dying alone have to do with being a part of an institution you don't necessarily agree yeah. with? For a start, 
Did like you ask AI to write like a wordy <laughs> yeah. question or yeah. something? <laughs> I mean, wh when it comes to contributing to institutions that you morally disagree with, uh, I'm afraid a lot of the time you don't really have a choice. Um, unless you want to be a total, like, hermit reject off the grid, um, live in a, like, a hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you don't have a choice. Um, things are set up, things are way bigger than, like, any one person can control. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's meant that, um, kind of hypocrisy thing is also mentioned in the Fallout show. There's, like, a little debate conversation about that kind of idea with, um, Walt Goggins and... Yeah, yeah. Character. Yeah. Um... um where it's like, if you disagree with the system that you are born into and a part of, the answer isn't necessarily to just reject it. Surely the answer is to use it against itself. That's, a, in theory, better than just doing nothing. Right? Yeah. Just handling. But then you're just kind of doing the thing. Like, the... It's it's a snake eating its own tail. Yeah, yeah. Um, then it's something bigger, as you're saying, than yourself. Like you can't control the system you're born into. If you were born into the royal family hundreds of years ago, you know, it might be pretty good for you. Um, yeah. If you were born as like a peasant, it might have been pretty shit. Yeah. You know? What can you change? Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's when um, you like change, I guess, comes in the form of uniting with like-minded people but if you're like an anti-capitalist or like good luck not having a job and never buying anything yeah like i, I wish you well but you're gonna mm, i think you should set up struggle. a merch store and sell merch yeah to fund your anti-capitalist movement yeah saying yeah eat the rich maybe there you go. So that'd be, that might be funny. Um, yeah. Um, so a thought-provoking question. I think I might, I might see when Jordan Peterson's touring and take that to him, and mm. stunlock him for three days. Yeah, he'll just start like, crying. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, I I wouldn't mind a little bit more context on that question, specifically yeah. the last bit. Like, <laughs> what's the institution you're morally against that stands in the way? Like, uh, Tinder? You talk, talking about getting, like, Tinder? But Tinder's not an institution. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, what are you talking what about? What constitutes an institute? Um, I feel like there needs to be some kind of, like, governing body involved yeah the the board of dating app directors <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck this. laughs>